All right, welcome back to session number two on uh, using the easel software. Uh, again, we're going to go log in. And to log in, we'll type in inventables again. And this time it comes up and we can go to sign in. Click on one of the options there. Get to our login screen. And since you created a user ID last time, you can just log back in. If you notice, uh, when we come up now, uh, your opening screen has the last thing we worked with. We didn't give it a title, but it's the last one we used. So I'm going to select that and we'll continue with that project. And this time I'm going to give it a title. Click on the area on the top here where it says Untitled. And now we can change the name of this. And we'll call this uh, Easel uh, Lesson 1. And we'll close it. Right. So now anytime we refer to that, we'll refer to that as Easel Lesson 1. All right. We'll save that. It, it saves it automatically, but we don't have to do anything. Uh, we'll open a new project. And you notice that it view up in the tabs here that the uh, last one is still there. It's there until you uh, exit uh, Easel. Anyway, uh, this is our new one. And again, we have a board that's 12 by 8. Let's change the size of the board this time. Let's call it a 12 by 12, just to be different. All right, so now we got a 12, a 12 inch square board. This time, we're going to use the line tool. If you remember in the last uh, session, we used a line tool, but we only made a single line like that. We didn't finish it. This time, we're going to finish it. So I'm going to keep making a strange shape here. Now, if I stop here, I'll hit the escape key to get out of the line. You'll notice that it creates this object here, but it's open-ended. So obviously, we can't do uh, some of the cuts, can we? If I go to the cut screen, I can cut on a shape, I can cut inside, and I can cut outside. That's it. Well, of course, I can't uh, uh, clear it out because it's not closed. So, and you can't close it once you've um, created it this way. So let's go back and do the line tool again, and we'll create a similar object here. Won't be exactly the same, but close. And this time, I'm going to close it. Now I'm going to move it a little bit so we can see it better. Move it down here. Now, when I click on this, because it's closed, you'll notice that we can now clear out the pocket. So if I wanted to clear the pocket out, we could do it. Whereas in the other object, we couldn't because it was open-ended. So you have to remember that when you're using a line tool, uh, you have to know what your end result uh, that you desire before you start, or it's, uh, it's just not going to work. All right. So let's do something else with this. When we click on this, there's a, a thing called Edit Points. And when you click on Edit Points, you'll notice you have all these dots that appear around your object. So if I wanted to change this object, I just merely grab one of the dots and move it. I can do it in a straight or a curved fashion. I'm still selected because it's blue. I now curve it. I can go back and make it straight. Just moving back and forth, curve to straight. All right. If I want to move to a different one, I can merely click over here, and now I can do the same thing with that, curved, straight. Or now I can move it out a little bit, do it again, curved, straight. So you can see by using this, um, we could actually create a very unusual shapes with it. Uh, it's a little tedious, a little difficult to work with, but um, if you're, you're trying to create something unusual, um, this is a good way to go. All right, let's leave that one alone. Let's try one more thing. Uh, we're going to start with more of a bell-shaped item. I am going to try and make a bell out of this, by the way. Um, so we'll go up, we'll go over a little bit, and go down. Okay. Um, 
This time we're going to grab it and move it down to the visible area again. Okay. Now, when I edit the points, I can move this up a little bit to clean it out, see, make it even. Now I can also curve it. I can curve this one too. Now I've got the top of a bell. If I want to take this one and add a point in the middle, notice the point is following my crosshairs here. I'm just going to move it in a little bit. There we go. I'm going to make that curved. Make it look nice. I'm going to put another one on the other side about the same way. Move it in a little bit. Curve it. Click outside the area. Now we have a bell. So you can create uh, any kind of shape you want with this. Um, you can't be too precise because there's no way of um, telling you exactly, <clears throat> exactly how uh, the angle or the length of your, your line segment. So uh, it is limited in some way, but you can create these shapes that are sometimes quite useful. All right. And again, this one, because it's closed, when we go to the cut screen, I can clear out a pocket if I wish. And clear out the bell-shaped pocket. All right. The other thing that's uh, the next one down here is um, a drill point. Now it brings up uh, this little symbol here, and that's actually a drill, uh, a hole. If you go over and look at your uh, piece of plywood, it actually drilled a hole in it, and it uh, defaults to full depth, so it drilled a hole right through the plywood. So what's the diameter of the hole? Well, the diameter of the hole is the same diameter as the bit. You can't change it. That's the only thing you can do with it because. Uh, as you might guess, when you're drilling something, it's going to default to whatever size bit you have in the machine. If I change this to a quarter inch bit, and go out and look at it, you'll notice the hole got quite a bit bigger. That's because it's a quarter inch now. So we go back to eighth inch, and the hole got smaller again. This is quite useful for uh, you know creating holes in the desk. Uh, back later on, uh, we're going to create a cribbage board uh, using holes and uh, you'll see uh, the value of it. Uh, you can also limit the depth of cut. You don't have to go all the way through it. I can go maybe a quarter inch through. It's almost a quarter inch. Not quite. Make it exactly a quarter inch. Now it's a quarter inch deep. Uh, so you can uh, limit the depth of the hole. Uh, that could be quite useful in cabinetry and so forth where you're um, creating shelf pin holes. Uh, you don't want them to go all the way through the wood. You only want them to go uh, a certain distance through the wood. They're typically the quarter inch or five millimeter. Uh, so depending on what bit you have in your machine, you could uh, make shelf pin holes with this. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing on the list is text. These are fonts. I'm just going to pick the top one here. And I'm going to uh, just call this uh, ABC. All right. Now, I'm going to take my ABC. Move it up here where I can see it a little better. There we go. And you'll see that um, it has uh, height, two inches. It has width, but I can change those things just like it was an object. Well, I can bring them both all um, together. I can just stretch it out and make the characters wider. I can bring it down in this way. Uh, so, and I can change the font. If you look at this, we had the fat face. Now the fonts that are available in the um, standard version of Easel are the ones that are highlighted here. You'll notice that the other ones say Pro next to them. Well, you can only use them if you have the Pro version running. So we could change it to this one. I haven't used that one before, it was a little different. Um, and you could go down to the next one, Bangers. I've used this quite a bit. Um, it's a, a pretty wide one and you kind of like it. Um, because I can, you can use it for uh, a wider bit, but you can't use it for an eighth inch bit. And how do I know that? Well, if you look at the ABC here and look at the ABC over here, you'll notice that the cross on the A is missing. See how narrow it is? It's narrower than an eighth of an inch, therefore we can't cut it. Now, if I make this bigger, at some point, there we go. At some point, you're able to cut that because now this uh, little line segment in there is an eighth of an inch or more. 
So you have to be careful using fonts. Uh, it works in conjunction, again, with your bits. We talked about that in the last uh, session. Uh, bit size is really important for some of this stuff. Let's get down to 16th of an inch. Let me go back the other way first, then we'll go down to 16th. If we go back to where we started, it's about there. We notice we don't have that. If I change the bit to a 16th, take a look. Now we have it. Mm -hmm. So now if you look here, the A is complete because I went and changed the bit size. So there's different things you can do with uh, uh, different fonts uh, to achieve these results. All right, let's go see what other fonts are available out here. Um, we had bangers. Let's see, that's where we were. Go down here. And let's say Tui, that's available in uh, the standard. That one uh, gives a little, uh, a little more detail. It kind of flows a little bit rather than being a block font. Uh, but if you notice the, uh, the A still has that problem when the, we have it too small. So again, we have to make it a little bigger. There we go. A little bigger to complete that A. Again, you have to be careful, uh, especially using straight bits. Now, when you are using um, easel, you'll notice that the only things available to you are straight bits. Uh, 16th, 8th, uh, quarter, 8th, and I put a 32nd in here on occasion. I can go down to 32nd inch, but that's pretty close, small though. Uh, they're easy to break, uh, very hard to work with, so uh, you know, try to avoid them when you can. Uh, but then you go down to V bits, but they are only available in the Pro version. V bits are kind of neat in that um, you can really get some nice feature in your uh, character sets by using V bits. But again, you can't use it unless you're using the Pro version. We do have a Pro version at the shop. Um, if you create a design in the standard version, uh, there, I'll show you ways and in, in, uh, further lessons on how you can uh, export that or save it and share it to the uh, community. And we can get that uh, and load it down at the shop. And once it's at the shop loaded under the pro version, then we can change the bit to a V bit and see what the results are. So we have some options later on on how we're going to use that, which is why I suggest you stay with the standard version as long as you can. Once you get good at this and you, you see you want to use the pro version, you do have a 30 day free trial and uh, you can use it. But once you start it, uh, it keeps going. So uh, you only get one shot at it. So make sure you, uh, uh, you've got a lot of the material under your belt here so that you know what you're doing uh, before you turn the pro version on. So that's pretty neat, that stuff. And again, uh, you can turn the uh, a little bit, but you can't do this. If you look down here, it'll, uh, when you have the pro version, you can make it flow up or down, but they don't, don't uh, authorize that for the standard version. Yeah. So what else can you do? Well, we didn't talk about cut. We can still cut on the shape path, can't we? Or we can cut outside the shape path. Notice what happens when you do it. You know, depending upon the width of your bit and the uh, way the character is formed, you could lose some information, couldn't you? So this is cutting inside the shape path. This is cutting on the shape path. Um, I kind of like on the shape path better for this particular uh, uh, font and size. Let me turn it back where it was. Okay, like remember, I can do that in uh, here by changing this to 360 or zero. It'll come out the same. Now it's uh, uh, parallel to the bottom of the board. So those are the text features, um, very useful. Uh, we do have quite a few of them, even in the, uh, in the uh, standard version, you can see we do have quite a few of them that we can use. That's anything that's highlighted down here. It doesn't have pro next to it, see it? Anything that doesn't have pro is available to you. So you can get down and play with some of these a little bit. These are kind of neat, these kind of fonts. Uh, they're a little, uh, gets a little crazy with the bit, but uh, you can make them work. They're uh, good for uh, larger fonts mostly. Um, let's see if we can do something with that. Uh, just to see, that's cutting on the shape path. Let's cut outside and see what it looks like.
Yeah, it looks a little better outside on that one, doesn't it? Even though we're missing a little detail up here, it flows pretty nicely. So again, you can play around with these things and, and come up with a, a solution that might be uh, might work for you. All right, well, that's it for today's session. Um, I hope this works for you. Again, practice these different things we talked about today. And uh, we'll save these. And at the end, uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, create some uh, actual models on the X-Carve uh, machine when we go down to the shop. Uh, most of this I'll be doing at home, so um, I don't have the machine available to me to show you uh, right now. But um, when we get towards the end, we'll be doing some modeling, and then we'll take it down to the shop and actually do some cutting. And we'll be able to show you what that looks like. All right. Anyway. Stay with it, uh, practice a little bit. You, gotta, you really have to spend some time with this if you, uh, you want to really use it well. All right.